Claiming a Muris got going uh, last summer, really, for me, uh, when I took the initial steps to, to start making it happen. I wanted as many community uh, organizations involved as possible. I wanted to represent our community to, from children, uh, musical organizations, artists, um, not just the artistic community necessarily, but all sorts of people. I had my two counselors working on their themes and they decided that Dr. Seuss was fun, it was whimsical, um, it was easier for our beginning artists to be able to paint the lines and things like that. So that's a majority of the reason, plus it's just a really fun theme and you can do a lot of colors and things like that. This is just a really fun way for kids to be able to be exposed to a piano. Um, so when we heard that we would be having it outside, we just thought that would be a really perfect thing for our environment. Since we're a radio station, we wanted everything to do with radio and music, and so records, and, and I'm talking since radio, the inception of radio, so we have reel-to-reel -reel tapes on there, we have records, um, we could probably get some 78 records even if we wanted to, um, LPs, and then of course CDs that are used more, we don't have any flash drives or MP3s on there, but um, we also have James Brown, so you know, singing and um, transistor, transistor radios that are going to be uh, attached to the top of it. It was just an overarching advocacy for music itself and for involving yourself with the community and with music. It's an unnatural surface for my medium and uh, I mean it has layers and textures and all this different stuff going on. And the fact that it's fully functional and people are, you know, it's gonna be looked at like a piano and not just a piece of art. It has very mixed meaning. That and it's yellow. <laughs> I'm really excited to do it. I think uh, it's, it's a really strange endeavor for me and somebody of my medium in the art world to embark upon. The whole thing about the keys, I guess the keys are actual ivory. Yeah. Like this is the only one of the only pianos that has the ivory. So I told him we were going to close the lid and maybe just do minimal amounts on this yeah. since you can't even see it. So the idea is we're still just going to bomb over this, but at some point lift this and cover and just do like minimal amounts of line line work or not. I mean, really, it doesn't matter. But the essential thing is nothing on the keys, nothing on the on the pedals. And that's it. I'm an artist and I've gotten involved in painting this piano because I belong to the Kalia of the Valley Society, which is a Celtic dance organization, nonprofit organization that promotes Irish heritage. And since the piano is housed at the VFW, which is where the Kaleys are held and the classes are held, our goal with this piano was to integrate 
both organizations. In the Kaylee dancing, they're progressive moves, which means the people will move in their positions. And here we see couples one and three moving down the set. I thought it would be a great thing for this community. I thought Portland hasn't done it, Eugene hasn't done it, Seattle hasn't done it, why shouldn't Salem? We're so thrilled to be bringing these 11 pianos to parks and sidewalks and on the bridge, you know. <laughs> Everybody's really excited about being able to decorate a piano, get, you know, having a hand in the project, making it, you know, so much more personal and connected with the whole city. I work for the artist Luke Duran, who's a British artist um, who, who does all sorts of interesting artwork, but um, he launched Play Me, I'm Yours in 2008 after having an experience of going to the local laundrette, uh, or what you call a laundr laundromat, I guess, and um, um, noticing that people um, weren't really communicating or interacting with each other. They'd sit there for the hour it takes to, for their washing to go through the machine and not really communicate. And he's a musician himself, but he plays the guitar normally. And he just had this um, moment of inspiration about putting upright pianos, old upright pianos, in public spaces. Um, um, he got a, an arts organisation in Birmingham in the, in the United Kingdom. We were interested in commissioning the artwork and he ran it there once, in, as I say, in 2008 and was um, uh, really surprised when it started taking off and he got inquiries from arts organisations in cities across the globe. Uh, we've now done 28 cities over the last um, four years and uh, we're absolutely delighted to bring it to Salem. Through those holes right there? Perfect. I was here helping Noreen and, and, and uh, Jenny from the Salem Chamber Orchestra install the pianos yesterday and we just had um, a fab fabulous response from the, uh, the, the community in Salem. We had a, a young kind of punky guy with tattoos and piercings come up and ask us what we were doing uh, um, in, the, in the middle of downtown and we explained what was happening and he was just bowled over and was really inspired and, and was going to come out with some of his friends and jam and then we had uh, we went to Brian Johnston's park and we were putting the piano there there and six children between the age of six and ten all flooded over to the piano and every single one of them could get a tune out of the piano. It was just delightful. Really, we want people to talk to each other. We want people from different age groups. We want to bring down those barriers, particularly that, that get built up in city, busy city, city life, where people forget to smile and they forget to make new friends and communicate. And also, there seems to be a boundary between different age groups as well. And we kind of want to bring those down so we get older people interacting with younger people and, and that kind of thing. So it's about bringing communities together. Mm -hmm.